Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play XCOM Enemy Unknown. So last time we had a really successful raid on a very large UFO that we just barely managed to shoot down. That was insanely lucky. Uh, so now we are going to sell some of the sweet ass stuff we got out of there. Surgeries are something that are completely useless, as are stasis tanks. So we can sell out all of those without worry. Flight computers I should probably start hanging on to because we'll need them for a better fighter craft pretty soon. We'll hang on to this power source, but still, uh, damage stasis takes, damaged... Everything damaged is completely free game. And that's a sweet $150,000 there, pretty much. Um, we're not... <laughs> sorry, I, in my head, I tend to assume the, the like, one credit is, like, $1,000, but... $150. Bucks. What the, I've never heard that sound bit before. That was weird. Uh, but anyway, I bet that's a reference to the previous uh, XCOM game, but I've never played it. Anyway, now that we have that, let's go and build some laser rifles. These are pretty cheap. They're more expensive in the alloy front than the uh, anything else. Let's grab three of them for now. I don't want to accidentally... You can't use them on heavies or snipers, so I don't want to accidentally buy too many. Let's check out this sweet cutscene. Oh yeah! So these are going to be a really substantial improvement over our current assault rifles. And uh, let us also buy a couple of laser pistols which can be used by snipers and that's incredibly useful for them because then they can run around and use those as a primary weapon and they're actually not half bad especially if you have a scope with them uh, besides that I think we are all good um, and let's start scanning and if I need more laser rifles I'll go back and build more but for right now I think three is plenty uh, floater autopsy is done that's big so now we can make some defense matrixes right away because those are very important um, we could interrogate the floater and then that will allow us to, like, that will put us on a path toward a new story element, but we're not ready for it yet. I would much rather get my uh, satellites all set than deal with the story bullshit right now. I'm sorry if you're impatient to see what happens next, but uh, you'll have to wait until next time. Interrogate the floater would give us a research credit for, uh, you know the uh, armor, but that would only help with skeleton suits, which I don't think we're ever actually going to use. But we will have to research that eventually as a step toward our next armor, but it doesn't matter. If we can capture a Berserker later on, that will give us a full armor uh, bonus. But anyway, right now I want to go back to precision lasers. We should begin interrogating the yeah, fuck off. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, precision lasers will give us laser sniper rifles, as well as like laser shotguns, which cracks me up. Because, like, there's no way that could exist. Okay, stop. Council report's about to happen, so we need to launch this satellite immediately. Um, we're going to save China. There's no way around it. I'm not going to lose another country if I don't have to. Even though I would love to be working toward, like, I would love to get air and space over here. Much more important to just stop anybody else from leaving. Because uh, I would love to eventually have the bonuses from all of the continents... And uh, we haven't lost that yet because these are both in Africa and we already have the African bonus. So we'll start working toward Asia a little bit, I guess. And uh, now we can safely allow the council report to take place and that will give us a shit ton of money. Shit tons of money. Feels good. And they're very happy with me, of course, because they always are. I'm his favorite. And let us look at our satellites. We have five satellites in production. I don't know how many more I should build. I think we're going to, from building that satellite nexus, get an additional satellite uplink facilities at maximum four, five. We should get five more. Are we already building that many? Yes. Okay, so let's just let that happen until the uh, satellite nexus completes, and then I'll make sure that that doesn't do something I don't expect and give me more abilities. But for right now, I want to start excavating these areas so we can build more. It would also probably be a good idea to just get a thermo generator up while I have the money right now. Uh, because that will be helpful for letting us build more stuff. And hey, why not build... Oh, because we're out of power. Perfect. I was going to say, why not build another workshop so that we can get even cheaper stuff when we build things. 
Oh, but speaking of building things, I feel like I'm talking a million miles an hour right now. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. We should definitely get a Dodge Matrix online so that we can use that if something goes south in a fight. And I would love to get to a new ship weapon soon as well, but it's not going to happen for a little while, unfortunately. Let us start scanning some more. Uh, they want 15 weapon fragments for 93 bucks. I'll take that. That's a good deal. And we got precision lasers done. Excellent. So we can make a couple of those. And scatter lasers. Again, I don't use shotguns too much, so not going to be using scatter lasers either. Let's work on... 25 days for the light plasma rifle, huh? But that will get us working toward plasma, plasma weapons, including... Um, the uh, the plasma ship cannon, which is uh, an important step. So that might be a good idea. Alternatively, we could start working toward Titan armor by researching the power source. Which is going to be a lot quicker, so I think I'll do that first. Let's I do that. Your efforts to support the research team. And we have a shit ton of satellites now, so let's look at what we can do. Um... Oh, our <laughs> our nexus isn't done yet, though. One more day on the satellite nexus, okay. Okay, and one more. One more scan should do it. There it is. Okay, satellite nexus is done. Let's look at launching some satellites. So, excellent, yeah. I did it perfectly. We have ten... We have five new slots for satellites and five satellites to put up. Uh, how many more countries do we have total? One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we'll still need four further satellites after this. Which should be done with one more uplink facility, I think. Uh, but where should I put these ones? I think I should wait. Though, I could also... Hmm. You know, speed things a lot, up a lot, and it looks like I'm going to have to do it anyway to just put some satellites in South America. Get that bonus. Hmm. And then we can get a ton of research, er, uh, yeah, a ton of research done very quickly. I think that's a good idea. Let's do that. And now we'll have to put interceptors in South America, of course. All right, but we got the uh, we have ways bonus for instant interrogations as well as autopsies, and then probably the other three. We could use the other three to get Asia like done. Or we could, hmm, I think I should save the rest for right now, because I don't think I want to use the other three to immediately get another bonus. I could just use one more to get the United States bonus. And we're going to have to buy some interceptors, so I think that's a good idea. So we're going to get bonus air and space as well. Now we'll save the last two just in case they're important for something, but for right now let's go and create some ships over South America. And now they're going to be super cheap because of our air and space bonus. And let's scan some more. Thermal generator is going to be done, which means we can assign new construction. I'm thinking of foundry, actually. I knew I was about to build a uh, workshop before. Foundry is cheap, and it's going to get us some endgame bonuses that I like. So let's work on that. Let's make sure that I'm not missing anything in the training school, either. Rapid recovery is not that important to me. I think uh, the next thing we're going to want is iron will, which we definitely want. Will is very important later on. Um... Did I already make? No, I did not. So let's make some laser sniper rifles before I forget about that. So much maintenance to do this uh, this episode. But it's good stuff. We're, we're getting a lot of good things going. I'm suddenly much more optimistic about this run now that things are kind of going in our favor. We could build another satellite uplink. What do we need for that? 35 engineers. We need more engineers. Let's build a workshop in, antis in, yeah, in anticipation of that need. So that'll give us an adjacency bonus bonus between these two workshops, as well as some more stuff. Let's also build an access lift so that we can start getting ready to start building stuff down here, because that's going to happen fairly soon, I expect. And uh, that is all good. All right, let's scan some more. New abduction sites, all right. This is perfect. We need to do stuff in China pretty uh, desperately, and this is going to give me four more engineers, which is probably the best thing I could get right now. So we're definitely going to India. It's going to be a tough mission, but I think we can handle it. A lot of people should be back. Yeah, we got Captain Assaulty back. Um, so he's going to get a brand new laser rifle, as well as somebody has carapace armor. Let's figure out who 
has his carapace armor. Not him, but he's coming in soon too. But somebody who we don't want on our uh, team has, still has carapace armor from when they were... Man, this is weird. <laughs> I have so many decent units. I'm not used to this. Uh, so, oh. Damn it. Go back. I accidentally hit the escape key to try to go back one, and but it went back too many times. Who the fuck? Is it a rookie? One of these fucking rookies have my carapace armor? I know we have one more carapace armor on somebody. You can't hide forever. Who is it? Was his nickname Scotch? I feel like we've seen that Ruiz guy before. Um... Seriously, what the hell? Okay, we're just gonna go to the barracks. No, that doesn't help because now I don't know who's on the mission. There's one person not on the mission who has carapace armor. We're gonna fucking find them. I apologize for this. I'm sure it looks very, uh... very obvious to you, but... I cannot fucking figure out. Okay, so it's not a salty. It's not snipes. It's not and pepper. It's not Sokolov. It's Cook. Cook stole the cookies from the cookie jar. All right, get the fuck out of here. All right, now we're gonna bring. So let's think about this. Who do we want on this mission? We definitely want our sniper. Wesley Snipes is gonna come on. We're gonna give him carapace armor, laser sniper rifle, laser pistol, and scope. Perfect. Um. We don't want this rookie. Let's get rid of her. Clear unit. And uh, we want to take our best men for this one because it's a difficult mission. Let's see here. So we definitely do want our Captain Assaulty with us. Here's your carapace armor, sir. Sorry about the confusion there. Um, and he does not want a laser pistol because I think we have a second sniper. Yes. Squatty Cook. Okay, so this is just a squatty sniper, but I would love to get her leveled up if at all possible. Uh, she should not have an arc thrower. She should have a scope from this heavy. And the heavy can go back to the frag grenade. Heavy might actually take the arc thrower. She has a scope. Um, we don't want to take so many heavies either. Let's get rid of this squatty heavy because we have uh, laser sniper rifles that heavies cannot uh, take advantage of. So let's get rid of her and see if we can get somebody else on here. It's even like, uh, you know, it'd be a good idea to start uh, training another support, assuming this guy does not have the three medkit med kit uses. Where's our second medkit? Oh my god. Everything's fucked up because everybody was injured for so long. Who has a medkit? This guy does, and somebody in the backlog does as well. Uh, is it... We don't have any more support, so it's not on a support, it's just on a rookie or something. Frag grenade. Frag grenade. Frag grenade. Come on, who has my med kit? I really wish this was done a little bit better. Alright, here we go. Squatty, get, let go of my fucking med kit. Get out of here. Alright, who's that support I wanted to take? This guy. And he does get three med kit uses. Alright, that's excellent actually. I like having two. Oops, and he needs carapace armor as well. I like having two supports with three med kit uses each. Makes me feel safe. Uh, we are going to keep this heavy on board. And this guy should get a laser rifle, unless we're out. We are not out. Sniper. I gave this sniper a. No, I did not. You get a laser pistol as well. Does everybody have good weapons that can hold them? I believe so. And we just need to assign the arc thrower so that we can start trying to capture aliens. So you have an arc thrower and... I... Hmm... Yeah, okay. You can have you can have an arc thrower. That works. And let's launch that mission. So given our fantastic equipment here, I don't anticipate having too many problems, but that's a dangerous attitude to have in classic mode. We could easily find ourselves having more difficult more difficulty than would be expected. So, one of my snipers, I believe, has a, uh... Yeah. Alright, so you... Well, I was gonna say his battle scanner, by the way. I like just throwing these out on the first turn to see what kind of trials we might be facing as we move out. So, let's see... 
We got Thin Man, alright. And uh, he actually claims to have a squad site shot, but that actually goes away next turn. It's really annoying. So you can't actually use battle scanners for squad site. At least it's not not as far as I'm aware. If you can, then that's... Like, I've just had the worst luck in the world with it, or some sort of glitch. But anyway, we have this second sniper who's not going to be able to move and shoot, and also not going to be able to... Uh, let's save their move for last. We'll see if we get vision doing this. I'm not too worried about thin men. Okay, no vision up there, that's good. We'll send somebody like up here. And somebody up here. This is an awkward map, not a lot of great cover. But, and this is my second sniper, so she is going to dash. Hmm. Here. I want to get her so she can get a shot. So that she can start leveling up and become my second sniper. But I also don't want her to die. And that's a tough balance to hit a lot of the time with newbie snipers. But her laser pistol might help her out a little bit. Alright, so nothing yet. Let's go ahead. See who can get up to some good future cover. Oh, this guy does have shots. That's weird. That's never happened for me before at all. Alright, so we got a 98% chance to straight up kill one of these Thin Men. Wow. <laughs> Alright, that was easy. As you can see, 10 critical. Very quickly, snipers start becoming very valuable units. This guy's gonna be like, what the fuck was that? And just run for some cover. And we are going to attempt to flank him. We can hear him. Good job, guys. Good reporting there. Let's get a heavy on top of this car. That should give her great vision and tell us what's coming up. Your 50% chance to hit this guy, I like it. Three damage. Oh well. So all he's gonna take is one more pistol shot and he's down. Let's see, how's the best way to do this? We'd actually send our second sniper on top of this vehicle. Which I kind of like, but she's not going to be able to shoot on this turn. Hmm. Where should we start sending people? This guy can maybe come over here and get a flank. No, but he can overwatch. Well, don't do it yet, just in case something crazy happens this turn. Um. I would love to capture him as well, but I don't see that happening. Um. I would really like for him to be dead on this turn. So I'm considering a run and gun here, kind of looking at where I'm likely to get a shot. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Doesn't really look too promising. We can put him here. That's a good place. Let's try that, and then we can do a, uh, like a double shot, a rapid fire with the pistol. Hey, excellent. All right, let's see what kind of chances we have here. 20, or 42 to hit. Or uh, rapid fire 27. Try it. Excellent. We got some lucky shots on that guy. Not afraid to admit it. Um. So let's move this guy up here. And often the way I tend to do this map is I'll like sweep this area and then start moving over this way. And there's often some aliens hiding back in this corner as well. Uh, so first off, we're gonna be heading straight to the back here and see what we got. I am going to dash a sniper on top of this truck. It's a little bit risky. But if they get a shot next turn, it could really pay off. And is that everybody's movements done? Looks like it. Let's start overwatching. Let's see what we got. Wow! Two mutons gonna join the party here. If I can capture one of those, that would be enormous, but I'm not gonna take any chances doing it, because these guys are still a pretty huge threat. But man, would it be good to capture one. And they are setting themselves up for a rocket right now. <laughs> Just perfect rocket territory. Okay, how much health do they have? Ten? We could do six or shredder them and make them take more damage for four. But six would basically... Uh, I think shredder is slightly better here. So let's do that. Definitely no better time than the present right? to use a rocket right now. That's an excellent shot. Oh, and one of them died because of the car exploding. That is huge. 
Okay, so who has a, a, an arc thrower? The heavy has one, and this guy has one. Oh man, <laughs> this guy could be in trouble. Uh, let's take a shot at him. 69 does up to 6 damage, I don't like that. I have to weaken him but not kill him. Can our sniper hit him? No. Um, I want to like I want to hit him with a laser pistol would be the best bet right now, but even a normal pistol because he's shredded it should be substantial. So let's try it. 69 to hit up to two damage, 50% critical. Two? That's how is that shredded? Okay. Hmm hmm hmm. I want to know what my chances to stun are. Bring this guy up here, see if he has a shot. He does not. Does he have a grenade? Oh, a grenade I think would do four and kill him. <laughs> Damn it. Let's try, let's see what the chance for a stun is. Forty-nine. That's bad. Hmm. Ooh. Who can help us here? This guy probably won't have a shot over here. Nope. This guy, there's no way for him to get far enough. And our sniper, similarly. And I don't want to, like, sacrifice anybody to make this happen, but I, I think I am going to take a shot on the chin here for a 49%. Or I could shoot him with my pistol now and do it next turn, which is better. Let's take the 49 now. Other people can take pistol shots next turn. Stun failed. Yeah, that's to be expected. And now, sniper, stay on Overwatch over there. And you... I actually shouldn't be Overwatching with these guys because I don't want to accidentally kill this Muton. We've come this far. Might as well... Uh-oh. Oh, that's just a car blow. I thought that was going to be like three more Mutons running in which could have been a pain in the ass, but let's see what this guy does. He's just gonna take a shot, that's to be expected. 10 damage is pretty huge, I was not expecting him to hurt that bunch. Um, oh, you don't have a pistol, I forgot about that. Okay, let's take another pistol shot on this guy. Excellent. Don't panic anybody. That intimidate move they has, have has a chance to panic anybody who damages them. Excellent! We got a Muton. That is so huge. Uh, that's going to be a uh, uh, plasma. That's going to make it twice as fast for us to research plasma weaponry, which is just a gigantic, gigantic advantage. All right, let's not. We don't want to trigger any more enemies for right now, so I'm going to play it very cautiously. Do some Overwatch with some people, and next turn we're going to heal the shit out of that guy. Uh oh. Inconsistent. Where did that come from? What the fuck? Cyberdisc just spawned in the middle of my troops. At least we got a lot of Overwatch on it. That is all gonna miss? Unbelievable. Okay, well my newbie sniper actually took a good shot there. Um, that was an incredible spell of Overwatch missing. But Cyberdiscs are dangerous. They can one-shot basically any unit at any time. Uh, even on normal mode. So we're going to take a headshot on this cyber disc first off, right off the bat. And we also have heat ammo on our um, heavy, so that should be very useful. And with a height advantage, should do a lot of damage. Or uh, should have a very good chance to hit, I should say. Yeah, does up to five damage, but that'll be double. It's dead. That is huge. Okay. First cyber disc gone. We do have another drone, but this guy should be no threat whatsoever. Even if he lives, he can only do... Oh my god, an 82 missed on that guy? Are you kidding me? He can only do like 3 damage, but actually this guy could die from it, so maybe I shouldn't speak too soon here, but let's just get this guy dead, huh? Okay, don't fuck this up. You have an 88% chance to fire. Do not fail me. Alright. No and you... Just hide next to the medic and he'll deal with you next turn. Apologize that took so long. We kind of had a situation with that fucking... Um, 
what was that, a cyber disc just a appearing out of nowhere. But as you can see, now that we have beam weapons, we're really tearing shit up. They're substantially more powerful. Okay, I just heard a muton, but don't panic. Should be fine. Let's use a med kit on this guy, and we'll use one more next turn, actually. Just get him fully charged up and ready. You continue to overwatch in the meantime. You can reload. We gotta do, like, one of those half overwatch, half reload turns, just in case something else appears in the middle of my troops. You definitely need a reload. Probably should have moved her a little bit to a safer position. Oh well. What? That had better not have killed anybody. I did not expect that truck to blow up there. I'm not sure what caused that. Thank God that apparently standing directly on top of an exploding truck is not dangerous. Alright, so one more heal on this guy and he should be good to go. He also needs a reload, unfortunately. Um, but now we're going to move this guy over to maybe a little bit more of a sane area. We're here. Just on top of this fire, no problem. Uh, you can continue to overwatch up here. I should move this guy up on top of this build, or uh, on top of this truck, I think. That will give him more aim, and he'll, with his squad sight, he'll be able to see very far up here and basically take a shot at whatever we find. Um, Fatty, for right now, you can also overwatch from up there because that gives you uh, tactical advantage on anything that comes your way. Let's just keep this guy where he is. I don't want to risk getting vision on anything. And good thing I did that because now these guys are going to eat a bunch of overwatch instead of being in good positions. So they are both severely injured. That's great. And they are hiding. Okay. I think this is yet again another excellent opportunity for a rocket. If we can hit both of them. Which we can. And that should just kill both of them. Which is, like, that's great. I don't want to deal with these guys. And really, what else am I going to use these rockets on anyway? So that's two more dead mutons. Is that the end of the mission? Yes, it is. Oh, wow. That went unbelievably well. I'm really happy with uh, how things are progressing here. We got Panic in Germany. Not happy about that, obviously. I apologize to any Germans who might be watching, but despite that, I think things are going pretty well. Uh, we got a new captain in uh, Doreen Fatty. She is going to get Danger Zone, which, uh, which uh, makes her rockets two tiles larger, which is great. Uh, two grenades in a single in inventory slot is okay, but this is about the part in the campaign when I start phasing out grenades entirely. So we're going to take danger zone. We're also going to take dense smoke instead of combat drugs. These are both great upgrades, but I tend to use smoke grenades in a way that benefits dense smoke. I would have to change my playstyle to use combat smoke effectively. This just um, makes your smoke like twice as powerful defensively and makes them bigger. This one makes them um, have more critical chance as well as more will which is nice, especially since later on you use you use will more for than for just uh, resisting panic. But overall, dense smoke is great, so I'm gonna take that. And we're also going to get major level on um, Chris Assaulty here. Why is he naked all of a sudden? He's just got his default stuff, but that's okay. I don't really care. Anyway, that gives him extra health based on which type of armor is equipped. That is enormous. He is going to have so much health now, and he is also pretty severely wounded. He's the one who had to go in there and take that muton. Valen's all wet because we captured a muton alive. No problem. And uh, that went really well. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Why am I even dealing with this uh, UFO power source when I have instant autopsies and interrogations? Let's do these really quickly. And I'll actually let you guys watch the cutscenes. Thing spoke to you? Not precisely. 
But when you have access to a creature's brain, certain patterns can be discerned. Recent images and thoughts. And what exactly was our late friend thinking about? This particular image appeared in the creature's thought pattern several times throughout the procedure. We've already met that thing, Doctor. This is hardly the kind of breakthrough we were... And there was a neural link in the creature's mind between this image and this one. That's the thing that pulled a disappearing act when we shot down our first UFO. And let me guess, you want to poke around in its head, too. It is the next piece of the puzzle. And this time, instead of shooting it, I suggest we try to capture it alive. Way ahead of you, Valen. Did that like two missions ago. Keep up. So we got basic armor technology research credit earned. Uh, let's also go ahead and do the chrysalid autopsy, which is going Based to... Based on what we've yeah. seen as a field so far, including several grotesque examples of trauma resulting from the emergence of its young, we've taken to calling this specimen a chrysalid. So that's going to give us the ability to make chitin plating, which is something I often switch my higher level soldiers to. That gives you, I think, five bonus health as well as halves the melee damage they take, both from chrysalids and also an asshole enemy that we'll see later on. Uh, let's keep on autopsying here, I guess. We got a lot. This unit appears to be a drone, which is similar to the military drones we are familiar with. This particular example seems to have the ability to repair damaged equipment. Dr. Shen and I believe it should be possible to capture and repurpose these for our own use in the field. Alright, so that's the drone from the Cyberdisc. Nothing unlocked by that yet because we haven't built our foundry, though it's under construction. Uh, but later on, that will give us a foundry project. We've yet to recover one of these in functional condition from the field. The men seem to enjoy using them for target practice. At the present time, we know that the Cyberdisc, as they've been calling it, is heavily armed, but it shows no clear pattern of behavior on the battlefield. That's the big asshole uh, cyber disc that we saw earlier. We can now manufacture a third type of uh, like temporary boost for our craft, and this one's kind of the most important one at all of all in a lot of respects. It makes your uh, fighter travel faster, which is we haven't seen UFOs where that's important on yet. But later on, you start seeing UFOs that can travel very quickly and get away from you. So if it looks like it's going to escape, you can use boost to uh, keep it in range for a little while. Uh, but those are very difficult to create. You need two cyber disk wrecks to make one, so we're not going to be able to even make one for a while. Let's continue on to a muton autopsy. This is the most physically aggressive specimen we've discovered so far, which the troops fondly refer to as the muton. I can only assume there's a colorful backstory for such a designation. No idea what that backstory is. I suspect uh, XCOM 1. Muton Autopsy uh, didn't give us anything yet either, because again, that is a very important foundry project, actually. And probably one I'll be getting going on very soon after our foundry is complete. Let's do the Thin Man. The Tall One has, up until this point, been unofficially referred to as the Thin Man. Initial testing has revealed a concerted effort by the aliens to modify this specimen's genetic structure in such a way as to make it appear human. However, on closer inspection, they seem to have had some trouble concealing the eyes, which appear to be reptilian in nature. And once again, no foundry, no unlocks, but we'll, like those will all just be in the foundry when we get it, so no harm, no foul there. And let's do our last one, interrogate this muton. He's pretty pissed off. And that is going to give us a Plasma Weaponry Research Credit, which is enormous. Uh, that allows us to, as you can see here, it used to be 26 days, now, does it, now it's 13 days to uh, research the Light Plasma Rifle. And we are going to, for the time, uh, skip out on UFO Power Source Research, and instead we're going to... Oh, actually, we can just go straight to the Plasma Rifle Research, huh? Uh, that might be a better idea. That's also 13 days. We only, like, we're going to have to um, either build some of these and they're very expensive or get more from capturing more mutons, which is very difficult. But uh, 
they're much better, and I think we only have one of each anyway, so we might as well start with the better weapon. They can all be equipped by the same people and everything. The pla the big plasma rifle is just straight up more powerful and better in basically every way. So we got our plasma rifle research going. That was a successful Dr. thing. Vellen's Let's go ahead and... Is... This guy's freaked out about Dr. Vellen's meanness to the aliens. And it looks like we are all good here. Let's just make sure there's nothing else I should build that I'm forgetting about that I've unlocked. We're always glad to have more help down here. Oh, chitin plating. But we need more chrysalid corpses. We yeah, we've hardly ever seen any chrysalids so far. So after we fight some more of those, we'll get some very useful um plating to give to our more valuable units to make it much more likely that they'll survive. Uh, like you start getting shit tons of health on units at about this point. Uh we should also I'm really nervous about the fact that we have no uh, new uh, fighter jet stuff yet, but pretty soon we'll be able to make plasma cannons for our jets, which is good. And I think that's going to do it for this mission. Thank you guys for watching. Next time we'll do some more scanning and see what's going on next, but I'm really enthusiastic about how this is going so far. I'm surprised that I've managed to come this far on my first attempt. I was thinking this Let's Play would be a lot of trial and error with an emphasis on error. But anyway, thank you guys for sticking with me through all this. I'll see you guys in the next episode.